What's up everyone, Seth Miranda here. This is Adorama Rewind, and it's a little bit of a change of pace this week. I am coming to you from our brand new Twitch channel set, Adorama XP. Uh, more about that a little later, but I know a bunch of you were in that chat yesterday when we launched. Me and Josh Chalet were here playing games like Bioshock, Sekiro, Mortal Kombat 11. It was awesome. Uh, got to play on this Raider GE75 from MSI and an a uh, Alienware 51M monster laptop. And if you were in that chat, because I know some of you are from Rewind, you were saying it there. Uh, you know this guy, Aaron Schechter, my support animal for when we lose. It's going to keep me comfortable today. More on that in a little bit, uh, but there's a lot of interesting talking points going on this week. Some real, there's going to be some good conversation in the comments. I can feel it. I can feel you getting ready to type on those keyboards. So let's just go right into it. This is the Nubia Red Magic 3 smartphone. Shoots 8K and has built-in cooling fans. Look at this monstrous phone. So it's claiming a lot, right? So it's saying that it's got 48 megapixels and that it can do 8K video and do 1920 frames per second high-speed video, super slow-mo. And it's got, this legitimately has cooling fans in it that's so high-powered. I mean, look, our hair is being blown away, like, whoa. Uh, we're looking at a price range of about $640, six gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage. Uh, it can go into 12 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage. This is crazy, okay? So if, if I'm gonna be carrying out a phone uh, to take photos and it's so high powered that it needs a cooling fan in it, I think I've made the wrong judgment on what I'm carrying with me in, the, in to begin with. Uh, is technology there? Maybe it is, uh, but is the application or the practicality of it? I, I don't know so much. Um, you know, the, we, got, we stick our phones in some weird places, a lot of lint from those pockets and bags and all sorts of stuff. Uh, if you need this much of a high power, I still say you need a legitimate camera out there. Uh, you also don't know what the sensor size on this is or anything. It is kind of crazy. I'm curious to see what happens when it hits and who's using it and how the actual images look and the video goes. Uh, and not to mention how much memory it eats up on that, ca on that phone. So uh, I don't know, it just doesn't seem practical to me. Let me know what you think down in the comments. A lot of people think that phones are like the new uh, camera killer out there. Maybe for point and shoots, but when you're getting into resolutions and things is this high powered, I'm not so sure. Especially when you need your phone all day for communication purposes, and then you go to use it and it's dead because you took a five minute 8K video. I don't know, call me crazy. Uh, speaking of some more progress, so Apple is not gonna support Aperture anymore on macOS Mojave. So it's true, I know a lot of people uh, were into Aperture when it came out. They thought it was like an answer to Adobe. Um, it did get killed off back in 2014. I do still hear people that are psyched on and still wanna use it, uh, but you know, things come to an end and they can't support things forever. And we're in 2019, you had about five years past the date they said that it was squashed. So I don't think that's too bad. Uh, let me know if you're an Aperture user. I'm pretty curious about that. Uh, but on the other side of that, Adobe is now giving, uh, giving out their subscriptions at $20 a month. $10, $10 a month plans are gone. You're now gonna be paying $10 more for Photoshop, Lightroom, and some more cloud storage. So uh, before you, know, you had 20 gigs of storage a month, now you have one terabyte. Uh, I don't know if that's valuable to anyone. I, for one, am not someone that uses the cloud uh, for storage, but maybe you are. Is it worth $10 more a month to get a terabyte of cloud storage. I'm not so sure about that. Uh, it, it just goes to show that people are relying on these software so much that they don't see an issue with raising the cost of it, you know, supply and demand. So I'm wondering if we're gonna see subscriptions die off. If uh, the, you know, the subscription plan came from people piracing the uh, software for so many years that you would just have a free copy and they saw no money from it. At least this way, uh, they were seeing money come in, you know, instead of spending three to $500 for the program, uh, or in some cases $150 back in the day, uh, you would just spend $10 a month and you could have access to it. And a lot of people were in uproar over this. Uh, it, it's, it's a, I don't know, I was kind of into it. I gotta tell you because number one, anyone had a pirate copy of uh, Photoshop was doing something wrong, was hurting the industry and not for nothing, if you worked on a commercial set and you just grabbed your laptop and you had like a, a free copy of it, there was always some sort of issue, some bug and there was no fix for it at the time. Now, if you're legitimate, you're paying your subscription, it's constantly updating, it's constantly with you, it's constantly fixing things and optimizing things and making the software better. And if you're actually trying to do this for a living, it is a big help. And uh, so the, the subscription plan doesn't bother me. T doubling the price overnight is a little, I don't know. 
Uh, let me know what you think about that. Is 20 bucks too much for you? I mean, I'm paying more than that because I do, I, I take on Premiere and some other things. So I'm kind of like, uh, why are they doing this? But it is what it is. In some kind of funny, but kind of not funny news, Kazakhstan caught beauty retouching photos of their leader. So this is uh, their man right here. And what, if you see this to this, look at this. Even the color grading is different. Look at the chin right here and they sucked it in and took away all his uh, wrinkles and you can see it right there. Uh, even the background color got juiced up and uh, the skin tone got a little changed and they warmed up his hair a little bit. Um, this is kind of crazy. It's, it seems kind of funny, but it's also not. Uh, this is photojournalism. Here in America, there's a code where you can alter images and put them out there for photojournalistic means, uh, including metadata. So everyone that commented last week about the prize-winning photojournalism photos that had metadata and that could have been skewed, uh, they can't alter that metadata and submit it for photojournalistic means here in America. I don't know what it is in other countries, but clearly they don't mind beautifying their leader. Uh, I wonder if it's kind of like a, like a dating app. Are other leaders like seeing his photos and then when they go meet him, they're like, whoa, like it's kind of like a catfish. I don't know, it's kind of funny, uh, but also kind of not. In some pretty awesome news actually, the CASE Act bills introduced uh, Congress to create copyright small claims. So what does this mean? So first of all, uh, in, in the past, if you wanted to get a lawyer, they wouldn't touch a copyright claim that was under $3,000. So uh, let me just introduce you to Thomas Kennedy over here from ASMP. Uh, he's been here at Adorama and spoke on some panels and stuff like that. Uh, he's a friend of, every, of um, Adorama and they're a great organization if you wanna get in touch with them. But so the CASE Act is the Copyright Alternative and Small Claims Enforcement Act of 2017. So ASMP, the American Society of Media Photographers and other um, organizations have come out to like really support this. So here's basically what it breaks down to. Uh, if you have a copyright claim and it's under $3,000, it was really hard to get a lawyer to take it on because they, they first of all, they wouldn't um, litigate it and they wouldn't, and they would probably take a cut of it that would make it useless for you to even spend your time and resources to go to court over this copyright. Now what they're saying is that if you wanted to, you can take something that's around under 3,000 and go into uh, small claims with it and fight for your own copyright. So that's pretty awesome. You can uh, just, handle it yourself and not worry about uh, court costs or that, oh, it's a too small or of a, of a lawsuit for it to be handled. It, it's, it's now giving you a chance to really go, I'm not gonna take this anymore and I'm gonna go take care of it myself. And maybe uh, $3,000 bites at companies that are taking your images are, will, will add up. I mean, a, a lot of photographers going after this, like if you went after a media source to kept using your images, like I had mine taken from a few and I'm not gonna name them, I don't wanna get into it. But if, I, if it was me and like a few other people and over time we just gnawed at them over 3,000, 3,000, 3,000. After a while, they, they start going, we better pay for our media and things like that. So this is a great, uh, step forward for fighting for image rights. And it's great to see that the organizations out there for photographers are heading it up. And it's great that we're just being heard, you know? So uh, look up the CASE Act if you're interested. Of course, the links are down below, but uh, Small Claims Court is a great place for you guys to stand up for yourselves and get paid, you know? And I've even heard people that have gone after uh, sort of media companies that have used their images and then they said, oh, well, we'd like to hire you for the next job. Like I've actually seen people get hired off of jobs from this. So that's kind of crazy. Uh, let's talk about another uh, platform that kind of went away. So Photo Bucket is back. Uh, if a blogger put this up, so pretty much they're offering a bunch of new features. They're saying that they have optimized it. So they're saying you get automatic image formatting for third-party sites like forums, apps, online storage, and blogs, unlimited bandwidth, image optimization for any device, free storage plans, 10 times increased performance, significantly enhanced mobile web experience, and so on and so forth. Uh, it sounds like they're taking a real uh, a shot at coming back. They're not just like resurrecting the, uh, the name or the brand, if you will, and seeing if people go to it. So if you're a photo bucket user, and I know there was so many you in the past. I don't know if there still is or if there's some new people that want to jump into it. Uh, take a look at it. I don't know. A lot of uh, companies like this went away, right? Flickr went down and uh, well, it didn't go down, but it's kind of like people walked away from it and then people had to buy pro accounts. Uh, I don't know. Do, are you a photo bucket user? Let me know down in the comments. I, I personally have never used photo bucket, but I do remember when you did image searches back in the day, everything that came up was photo bucket, just like everything came up now that's like Tumblr or whatever. Uh, in some brand new, so Canon made their new entry-level DSLRs incompatible with third-party flashes. So this guy right here, uh, Michael Andrew, uh, did a three-minute video to tell you guys that the Canon SL3 that was just announced and the Canon T7 2000D KISS X90 and 1500D 
don't have a center pin. So let me go over this. So right here is the hot shoe for your camera. Here's the center pin, which is a universal pin on almost all cameras. And now it's missing. What does this mean? What does it, why is it such a thing? So what this is basically saying is that the universal center pin, so if you didn't have, uh, actually, let me go back to it. So you see these other pins right here, these four pins right here, that is Canon's format. Nikon would have three pins or a different configuration and Panasonic would have a different configuration and so on and so forth. And that's why you always had dedicated shoes for flashes. Like you couldn't just put a Nikon flash on a Canon and hope it worked, but it would probably fire because of the center pin or it would know that there's something mounted to the camera because of the center pin uh, completing a circuit. So this is kind of a big deal because now companies, third companies like, you know, uh, Young Nuo and things like that, if you were to buy that flash, it wouldn't even find this, uh, like, like a, just a center pin, totally manual flash, could not find this camera and it would not fire. So it's making you have to buy a proprietary shoe flash. This also means that anything that goes into the shoe that you could use a microphone or flash triggers. So let's say you had a non-TTL, non-automatic, all manual trigger for like pro photo. It won't see that it's mounted to this camera. It will not fire. It will not talk to it. Uh, it's almost like you didn't even put the trigger on there. So this is kind of a big deal, especially if you're someone that goes to like meetup groups or goes to like open shoot formats like we do here at Adorama. Uh, if they hand you a trigger, it better be for your Canon. Otherwise, it's not going to fire. Uh, and, I'm and this is just newer entry level cameras. This, th this is only like a few models. This is not their... Uh, they've not said anything about their line going forward. This just seems to be what's just come out. So if you've uh, been looking into the SL3, uh, take this into consideration. If you have purchased a Canon and you're looking to get into uh, a, a recent uh, entry level Canon and you're looking to get into some flashes, uh, stick to their branding, obviously. Uh, it'll, uh, and that goes for anything like a uh, brand to brand will always talk better, but the universal center pin missing is kind of like, whoa, I don't know what they're thinking there, but uh, maybe they got a plan for that. I don't know. I can't speak for them, but it is what it is. So in more legal news, image rights, stuff like that, Jennifer Lopez backtracks on a legal case against the Instagram photo usage settles with the photographer. So this image of Jennifer Lopez was shot by Michael Stewart and he licensed it to the Daily Mail and then in, which was in an article in June of 2018. And then Jennifer Lopez put it on her Instagram and he went after her. So he sued her. She sues him back for wrongful lawsuit and now they've settled out. Uh, he, you know, he's making some bank on this. Uh, this is not new. This is not the first time. This is happening right now with plenty of celebrities and also a celebrity of the status isn't personally taking an image and throwing it on their Instagram. It's like an, they're incorporated. They have like people under them that are like part of, the, of a company, so to speak, and they're making these decisions. So uh, I'm not sure how this came to be. I'm sure it wasn't malicious, but the lawsuit back was a little, ugh, I don't know about that. Uh, so pretty much we've seen this before, right? We saw that Arch Enemy uh, a few rewinds ago uh, was when somebody that shot the lead singer in the crowd uh, went after uh, the, the clothing manufacturer, the designer that she was wearing, the outfit that day, posted a picture of her and they went after her. And social justice, not even legal, just got that page shut down. And here we're seeing legally they went to the courts and then out of court they just settled. Uh, I think we're, you know, it's, we got to realize if, as, as let's, let's put it this way, she's a musician, right? Would she want her music out there? Remember the whole Napster days? Would you want people downloading your song for free? No. So, She's taking images from somebody for free, but it was already licensed to Daily Mail. Like this, this was actually a commercial use image. It's, it's really messy. It's getting a little crazy out there, but uh, the internet is, is the wild west and you know, people can do things until someone speaks up. So it's, I gotta give uh, props to Michael Stewart for going like, you're not using my image and just suit her. And he stood his ground and now they're settling out of court, which is pretty interesting. But on the flip side of that, uh, Creative Commons launches its own search engine with over 300 million free images. So Creative Commons uh, never had like a dedicated site for you to actually find imaging that you could use for a stock photo means that are actually a, um, you know fair use out there. It's, uh, it's open to public use. So if you're uh, a website that's starting up and you don't want to, or a company that's starting up and you need images or content and you can't afford to get your own custom content or, you know, uh, it's, it's almost like when you create YouTube videos and there's, music you can use because it's fair use and there's music you can't use and your video will get flagged. Well, same thing goes on with images and now people can maybe just, instead of harping out what's going on and they find like Jennifer Lopez found that image, maybe she can go through Creative Commons and find images of herself through that means. I don't know, it's kind of, um, is, is this kind of 
putting fuel on the fire or is it kind of giving like a meal instead of them being hungry for images elsewhere? Sorry, sorry, Aaron, I'm sorry. You know, are, is, is it going to deflect from people stealing images? Can people go there and just be satisfied with what they find there? Or will it dilute uh, jobs from photographers because they don't have to go hire someone, maybe they can find free images. But this also is nothing new also because you could always just go and find these images yourself. Now they're just giving you a dedicated place to find them. So. Ah, it's so messy. What is going on? I don't know. Image rights. We're all just trying to have a career here. We're all just trying to get paid. Um, we're all just trying to enjoy being a photographer and not have to sweat putting ourselves into an image and then having it jacked and used somewhere. So I, I totally hear all sides of this and being a photographer myself, I understand. Um, you know, I think this is good, the Creative Commons thing. I think hopefully it'll make people calm down about hijacking other people's images. Uh, will it take away jobs? Uh, no, because it would have been doing that already, honestly. Uh, this is just giving you people an easier uh, universal means to find those fair use images. And uh, just wanted to throw this out there because I did last week and it seemed a lot of people fed off of it. Uh, if you're in New York, there is some great gallery shows and Gary uh, Winogrand is having a color street photo exhibit at the Brooklyn Museum. And you could check it all out here. I mean, this is pretty awesome. This looks great. And just so you know, it's going on till December of this year. So if you're in New York or you're coming to visit New York, uh, go to the Brooklyn Museum. Check it out. Gary Winogrand is a, a legacy out there. He's definitely been around a long time. He has some frozen in time uh, images out there. And, they're, they're, you know, the color grading and everything is just beautiful. Uh, I'm curious about the presentation here because they're all backlit and they're, you know, they're representations of slides that he shot. So I'm curious what it's, it looks like. I got to get over there myself. I feel kind of bad not being there and reporting on it, but I'm definitely going to go hook it up. Photographer always good for that type of stuff. So I'm going to leave you with this. Uh, yesterday we launched Adorama XP, the official Twitch channel for Adorama. So I am super psyched to bring this to you guys, especially because I've been a lifelong gamer myself and it was super amazing to be able to play on high-end machines, some of my favorite games of all time and new releases. And it was really awesome because I, I, I'm just psyched that Twitch exists and this community exists and it's, uh, very beneficial for everybody. If you want to get into gaming, if you're not sure what it's about, if you've been curious about it, if you've been a long time gamer, want to see how other people play, or just having someone talking about what's going on, or you talking to them while they're playing is a big deal, honestly. Uh, you know, it's not just watching a screen. So if you're curious about it, it's free. You know, uh, Twitch, just go into twitch.tv. And if you have an Amazon Prime account, it's even better. You can link them all and everything like that. Uh, so let's head over to the channel, take a look at it. Uh, we did a lot of giveaways. I gave away some mice from MSI and some uh, keyboards from them as well. I also gave away some gift codes so you guys can get some price breaks on some stuff you're wanting. But the first thousand followers right here are entered to win a raffle for the GE73 from MSI, which is awesome. You get a gaming laptop off the bat and uh, you also get a loot crate with a headset. But over here you can see what machines we've been playing on. So the GE75 Raiders, what I'm using right now, you are looking at that screen right now. And the Alienware Area 51M, which is a monster machine. And Sling Studio gave me everything I needed to stream this thing legit. And if you wanna see what happened, just go up to the top right corner over here, click it, and you can see me and Josh just being two guys that are just having a great time that we're on a Twitch and it was ridiculous. His energy is nuts. And it was just a lot of fun to play some classic games. Dave Brusca made a guest appearance. We had plenty of people stop by and every week we're gonna have people just swing by and Aaron right here in the corner is making people feel better when I beat them in Mortal Kombat. And you guys were on the right side there the entire time uh, helping us out and coming into the conversation. Drew Anello from the Guitar Room and over here I believe we had Vanessa Joy. Uh, let me see. And there she is right there in the middle. She was, she was a, a real good sport and she definitely does play. So it was a lot of fun playing Vanessa Joy and destroying her in Mortal Kombat. Just saying. Uh, so yeah, twitch.tv slash Adorama XP. I'll put the link down below. If you haven't joined, you still have, we're only up to about, as of this recording, 430 followers. So that means you guys still have a chance to be followers. Once we get to a thousand, we'll be pulling that raffle for the free laptop. And uh, let's grow this because the more this grows, the more resources I get. We can sponsor teams, we can do bigger events, we can have large gaming events, we can have LAN parties. I don't know, sky's the limit. I mean, if one thing Adorama is good for, it's pouring resources into things that people want. And look what's going on with our YouTube channel. We're traveling on the world to record things for you guys. Uh, the, the newest gear, the best gear, uh, the most interesting photographers we can find, like things like that. So just, Feed what you guys want from Adorama and they'll give it right back to you, okay? Uh, Twitch TV is just the start. 
Okay, I am out of here. This was exhausting. I don't know how long this one ran for, but it has been shorter than last week, right? Uh, I'm gonna leave you guys with a question that's Twitch oriented. And I asked this guys a long time ago. What's your favorite game to play and what do you play it on? Are you PC? Are you console? Let me know and let me know what you guys wanna see us play on Twitch. I mean, we played Mortal Kombat, Bioshock, Sekiro, Cuphead, and uh, Fortnite. Ugh, I'm not a Fortnite guy. And uh, we're going to go into Binding of Isaac and I think Overwatch this week. But do me a favor and write down in the comments what games you guys would like to see us play. If you join us on the Twitch uh, channel, thank you so much. Uh, let me know what you thought. Hit me up about some of the things going on here. What do you think about the Case Act? Are you, gonna, are you psyched about that? What do you think about that Nubia Red Phone? It's a little, uh, are you someone that uses Apple Aperture? Or are you sad that they're stopping support for it? Let me know down in the comments. I'll see you guys next week. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know. I'm, I'm, ugh, I'm just, yeah. Okay, guys. Anorox P. Go search it. I'm out of here. Peace.